Hey, this is Chris from Mission Capital, and today I just wanted to give a quick update on the new course I've got coming out called Advanced Three Statement Modeling in Four Hours, or hopefully less. Just wanted to show you where the model's at at this point, because it's pretty much done. And so I'm going to go through this as quick as I can. This isn't the exact historical data that we're going to get, but it's going to look just like this. So after we get a phone call from, uh, from our boss in this example, we're going to just get some junky, poorly formatted financials, and we have to use this to make a model. And so what I've been doing over the last week or so is just building an illustrative financial model to help teach this course. So we're going to start with something that looks like this, and then here's what we're going to build. And this may change a little bit, but this is the model that I've got put together that I'll be teaching through the course. And we're going to start with an income statement that comes all the way down to the um, management adjusted EBITDA. We've got a model built out by month with two years of actuals and then one year of forecast. We're just gonna do a one year monthly forecast for this course. Of course, you know, if you wanted more years, you could just add more columns, but for the, the purposes of teaching how to build this, I think one year is plenty. We've got some annual summaries out here to the right and some annual information in terms of business performance. So we've got our um, income statement here. Certain things are gonna be driven on this page. So ex for example, revenue is gonna be year over year growth. Margin will be done here. Anything in green is going to be linking to different schedules, which I have down here at the bottom, and I'll walk through those. But big picture, we've got our income statement. Then down here, we're going to get to our balance sheet. And then our statement of cash flows is all down here. The working capital schedule is here. We're also going to talk through how to build a bonus accrual, as well as income tax payments or distributions. And then the fancy stuff down here is the debt schedule. First and foremost is this cash flow sweep, because what our boss is going to be asking us is, I want to pay down as much cash or pay down as much debt as possible this year for a potential exit at the end of the year. So we're going to build something called a cash flow sweep that takes all the excess cash, pays down the debt until it hits a minimum of 500000 or whatever we specify over here. And then so... That cash flow sweep is going to go through our debt schedule. It's going to hit our revolver or the line of credit. You can see a lot of that pay down coming through here. It's also going to start to pay down our senior debt. So you can see we've got some normal amortization payments here. But once our credit card or revolver is paid off, then that cash flow sweep starts to pay off the senior debt as well. So that's the pretty fancy stuff when we're t talking about a three statement model and using a cash flow sweep to pay down the debt. And then lastly, we've got the covenants here, the fixed charge coverage ratio and the leverage ratio to show um, the financial health of the business from the lender's perspective. And then lastly, the returns for the equity holder because the, the plot of this course is our boss wants to sell the company at the end of the year and get a sense of what is the company worth in terms of valuation and then also how much cash can he expect to receive knowing that we're going to be paying down debt um, all year long. So this is a lot of information. I'm going to just jump around really quick. So a lot more to come in this income statement. We also have some uh, sub schedules. We're going to talk about maintenance capital expenditures, uh, growth capital expenditures, and the, the corresponding depreciation. Also a headcount tab. So really common in FP&A budgeting to, to lay out the positions, kind of by person, run that through your P&L. All of these, again, we're going to link back with these green numbers into our P&L here. And then finally, it's going to roll up into a one-page print-friendly summary. So this is part of our ending email to the boss. You know, hey, we've put together a model, and here's our recommendation. Here's the big picture, so you can actually read this. You know, maybe not on your phone, but at least you can print it out and take a look and not have to go scrolling through a giant financial model. So basically, we've got all the detail here, summary level here, and then all of our error checking up here. We want to know what's going wrong with our model, if anything, and what's going on with the business, if anything? Like, are we out of compliance with the covenants or is the revolver overdrawn as well? And then I've got another fancy thing here called the circularity breaker, which I'll talk through in the course. But what can happen is the, in the interest expense is circular in the file. And so this short circuits that to fix your model. So anyway, that's what we're building towards. I'm probably going to make a couple changes here and there. Um, I've got to go back and now, you know, record the whole thing. The first thing I do is always try to build it sees it makes sense, does it get across the illustrative points that I want to convey, and then I got to start from scratch, dust off the microphone, and start recording. So anyway, I hope you appreciate this update. I know it was quick. I didn't want to make too long of a video, but big picture, this is what we're going to be solving for. This is the course that we're going to be teaching soon, and 
hope to have it out in uh, maybe a couple weeks, maybe a month, um, but I will keep you posted. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.